the, the idea that I've put thought into this is perhaps an optimistic one, but uh, as you might imagine, you've been a topic of conversation on this campus a lot in the past week or so, certainly among a lot of us who discuss politics, and one of the things that sort of united people who like and dislike a lot of your ideas is that we appreciate your defense of free speech, and we appreciate you coming here to talk about it with us. Uh, but one of the things I thought was really interesting is Professor Van Dyke addressed the distinction between you and Jonathan Haidt, and you mentioned this as sort of a temperamental one, and I think, I'm, I'm sure that's true to some extent, but I, I noticed you've made a lot of more sort of substantively inflammatory claims, like in the course of this lecture, you called uh, the authors of Facebook posts demons and totalitarians. Uh, in past events, you've called them things like uh, neo-Marxists, cultural Marxists. Uh, you've called them, a, I believe, a fifth column that is committing treason against the West. And it seems to me this is more than temperamental. This is a substantive difference. And, and it's another, a substantive yes, difference, yes. And, and another thing you've done is that unlike height, you have a more sort of comprehensive political program. You've talked a lot in defense of traditional hierarchies, both of gender, of class, so on, uh, though emphatically not race. Uh, and so it seems like- I haven't talked about defense of traditional hierarchies in terms of gender and class, that's not true. Well, you've talked about hierarchies in society. You've talked yeah, about- Yeah, that's yes. true. I have no, done that, but I haven't justified them on the basis of gender and class. You, like, you whatever it is. Well, okay, you, you talk Not about, okay, that's an important yes. distinction. Okay, but you, you defend hierarchies in society in a way that, you talk a lot about the Pareto distribution, yes? That doesn't mean yes. I defend it. Well, okay, you- No, not well, yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you talk Officer. about- this guy, <laughs> it's like he just keeps moving on. It's like mischaracterizes a position, gets called out on it, does it again, gets called out on it, and then is like, okay, they keep <laughs> proving that something exists is yes. not the same as defending it. How in the world well, people attack it, right? Okay. You don't. People attack it. Attack, it's inherently, yeah. attack the hierarchies of society is inherently unjust, right? Well, they are they're unjust, yes. but they're also useful. Okay, so you you def you say they're useful. Some well, look, look, look at it this way. Okay, look at it this way. You obviously think that it's worthwhile to stand up and ask a question. Yes. So you think that standing up and asking a question is better than yes. not standing up and asking a question. Yes. Okay, that's a hierarchy yes. of values. Yes. Okay, without the hierarchy of values, you couldn't act. Of course. No, no, not of course. No, wait. It's Do partly you, why I'm I, defending I the hierarchy. Without no, the hierarchy, the there's no impetus to act. Hierarchy, right? What's that? There is a hierarchy in society, right? No, there's multiple okay, hierarchies in society. There are multiple society. hierarchies in society, right? Yes. And you say that they are based in, you, you invoke the lobster, right? That they are based in, uh, in nature. Yes. I said that they were inevitable. Yes, yes. That they were inevitable. Some right. people that doesn't mean that, that they're but, good. But my point is that, uh, this is general relative to it, you have a broader point than free speech. This is one of the things you talk about, yes? Yes. Okay, whereas I think there are some other activists who focus on more exclusively I'm not an activist. Speech. There are some other individuals who engage in public political speech. Okay. He's willing to mischaracterize various positions of Jordan Peterson just so he can get to his point, which relies on all of these mischaracterizations. Okay. Yeah. Who, who focus more exclusively on free speech, whereas you have other goals in mind. But one of the things that your more inflammatory language, and it's fair, it's a substantive disagreement, has done, I think, is, is it's politicized this free speech to an extent that someone like Haidt hasn't. I've noticed that when someone hears the term free speech now, they associate it with a specific set of thinkers, often as viewed as on the extreme right. And I think, I, I think arguably that's a problem of all factions in society, because free speech should be a universal value. Polls certainly suggest that it's coming under increasing threat from both sides. But I, I suppose the heart of my question, in addition to, of course, these other observations, is that do you believe free speech is your primary end, or do you believe these other points you're making are important? Because I've heard you a bunch of times defend free speech sort of contextually, like you've complained about some of the laws in Canada that you dislike, that they institutionalize false facts into the law, but it seems Ooh. to me that an absolutist defense of free speech makes no preferences to true or false. The point is that something, you are being forced to say something. It would be as bad as if, if you were forced to say something that is true, because the point of free speech is that you can say whatever you want, right? No, and, the point of free speech is so that you can think your way through yes, life without running like, headlong into a brick wall. But being told to think position A versus perfect position B is just as bad, right? Even if one is true and the other is not. Okay, well, there was a bunch of questions. Yes. Good job, by the way. <laughs> well, actually, wait, can I just ask one additional addendum? <laughs> Which is, uh, <laughs> I, I think that the politicization of free speech is, is by far the biggest threat to free speech because this is always No, been the a, radical leftists are the biggest threat well, to free speech. Well, okay, so this is a different disagreement. But I, I get your as point. As the professor agreed, uh, alluded to in previous questions, the substantive threats to free speech in much of the world, in Europe certainly, I think in the United States as well from the government have come from the radical right. And I think it's fair to say that on the specific narrow subset of certain departments on liberal arts colleges, it's fair to say a threat comes from the left, though its scope is in dispute. But, my question is, do you think that the way you talk about free speech, the way you link it to specific issues, the way you use inflammatory language, and the way you seem to make it, you seem to defend a specific set of free speech. There are certainly plenty of instances of free speech attacked on the other side that you don't mention as much. Do you think you risk politicizing this? Because it seems to me yes. that, okay, and, and do you not think that's a far greater threat? Because for example, the no. NRA, well sorry, the NRA is a group in the United States that defends guns rights, right? Okay, hold it. Hold yes. It. We need a question. Yes, okay. okay. I mean, My like question I said, is, you're doing fine, do you but think it's just, 
It's like he he's not even listening. He's like he's mischaracterizing. You believe this? No. Okay. But anyways, next point. You believe that point, right? No. All right. Anyways, continue. The what? It's too much. Yes. Like I can't keep it do straight. Do you think that your behavior risks politicizing it? And do you think that politicization is justified? I think my behavior risks politicizing it. Yes. I would rather it not be politicized. And I'm doing what I can to manage that risk. However, it's become political in my country because the government implemented compelled speech legislation. So I wasn't complaining about that before it became political. Now, um, there, are, there is a time even when you're detached in some sense from the political realm that you can't be detached anymore. Well, I'm not happy with the fact that this has become politicized. You could say that I haven't done a stellar job in ensuring in every possible manner that this has remained neutrally apolitical. Probably true, you know, but I'm not particularly unhappy with the way things have gone so far. So, and I'm not happy with the radical left. And so if they're irritated at me, so much the better, as far as I'm concerned. So have I conducted myself perfectly? It's like, uh, undoubtedly no. So um, I'm, I've got more than my fair share of faults and the temper is one of them. But um, I'm muddling through. Anyways, that was the video. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Peace.